Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so freaking excited to do this favorites of 2020 video. These are the things I use the most in 2020. Products I think are super freaking bomb. Meaning if you're thinking about trying them and you need them, I would say go ahead and pick it up. I guess we'll start with complexion. The first product I want to talk about is the Too Faced Born This Way. This concealer is really, really good if you are someone who struggles with crepiness under your eyes or you have a lot of fine wrinkles. It is pretty full coverage. I wouldn't say it's as full coverage as Tarte Shape Tape, but it does do a good job. I also find that if I let it sit for a few minutes, I get the best coverage out of this concealer, which is good because I have really dark under eye circles. Another one from the drugstore is Milani's Conceal and Perfect. This concealer is bomb, bomb, bomb. If I compare this and this, um, they're both really good. I feel like they're like sisters almost in a way. Like this is the drugstore queen and this is the I don't know if you call it high end, but you know, more expensive one. Queen. Um, this one gives really good coverage, a little bit more full coverage than the Too Faced one. It is reasonably priced. The shades are really good. The undertones for this one are like unusually yellow and that kind of annoys me. I think this range at Milani has better undertones. Love this one, full coverage. Both of these, I'm a full coverage girl, so I really like those. Contour and cream, I have the Fenty Matchstick. Uh, the first one that I have is the one that I prefer is Mocha because she is just very warm toned and I use her to bronze my whole face. It blends easily. It doesn't mess with the foundation under anything. It gives you that healthy kind of like tanned perimeter on your face because you know when you put on foundation your face looks kind of flat. Yeah, this fixes that. It's really bomb. I also have the shade Amber. She's a little bit too cool for my liking. So if I can get out the frame, this is Mocha and this is Amber. Uh, she can be kind of gray on me. I would say if you're anywhere near my complexion, a little bit lighter or darker, and I'm kind of washed out right now from my lighting, go with Mocha. Mocha, I've seen a lot of different people with different undertones wear Mocha, and even though it's warm, it's not like an unwearable warm or overly warm. So Fenty Matchsticks, they even like magnetic bomb. Definitely get a foundation. The one that I reach for the most is definitely the Nick. This one's medium olive for more in the summer. And this one is better for right now is soft beige. These are the ones that you need in your life. You like dewy. These are dewy. If you're an oily girl, she's not the one for you. So maybe skip on this one. But if you are dry or normal and you like a dewy, healthy skin like finish, go with this one. I will say the NYX Born to Glow, you do have to be um, using this with a sponge to, not sponge, sorry, a brush to blend it out. When I find that I blend this with a sponge, I feel like I lose coverage in certain places because the best thing about this foundation is that it's very skin-like. It almost feels like a second skin. That's what I really look for in a foundation. Something that feels like my skin. I don't like to feel like there's shit on my face. This is really bomb. This was definitely my most used in 2020. Like, I liked it enough to buy two shades. You know what I'm saying? Like, she good. The other one that I kind of used the remnants of in 2020 that is also my favorite, it's a high-end. This is the Dior Air Flash. Oh, I didn't see the name for the other ones. I think I'll just list them in the description for you guys below in case you're gonna use me as a shade reference. The Dior Air Flash. This one is kind of like a soft matte finish, but it's very skin-like. This one, I can feel even less on my skin than this one, although this is still very good. There's so much controversy over how to apply this foundation. The way that I find it works best for me after a lot of trial and error and wasting product if you spray this right on your face, it's gonna get in your hair, you're gonna be pissed, it's just gonna be messy, and you're not gonna, like, you're losing product. And this shit's so expensive that it, like, almost makes me angry, but I'm like, it's a luxury product, you know? Soft matte, full coverage, can be built up or sheared out. It's really nice. I'm hoping this foundation is one that I could wear on my wedding. Even here, it's, like, pretty much empty, which is, like, really sad. I'm gonna declutter this soon, but it's just so hard because it was so expensive. I forgot to mention this Becca. I don't know if it'll show you. I'm about to pan this B. This is Becca Brightening Concealer. This is so so good. I, this is a step I almost never skip. Like if I'm really in a rush, maybe I won't. But like if you're someone who is born with divots under your eyes, like those dark circles where you need under eye filler but you can't afford it, I think this is the next best thing, honestly, because it does a really good job correcting and brightening. I don't think this is meant to be concealer worn on its own, although you could do that. I find that the best way to apply this concealer is with my hands because of the warmth of it really melts it into the skin. And when I use a brush to do it, it does kind of look cakey. So a little bit of this goes a long way. It's gonna last you a long time. This is for my girls who struggle with under eyes or like don't sleep. I know there's so many powders on the market. Everyone's talking about the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Air Finish. Flaw, you know the, you know what I'm talking about. It's this one, hold on. 
Okay, this Charlotte Tilbury powder. A lot of people have talked about it and it's a good powder, but I must say my tried and true is always the number one winning to me and that is Studio Fit Powder Foundation. This is the creamiest, just this is, this is the best, okay? Like, peop, I feel like people are trying to reinvent the wheel with good powder sometime and, but I am curious about that Fenty one. But like, this is the best powder. It is so creamy to the touch. It provides you coverage. Uh, it can be sheared out. You can add more for more coverage. It's just so versatile. I find that this does not have funky undertones in the MAC line. This has been the only brand that like since I tried to find my shade in the, in the powder, I could find it and it's the right undertone, which is so important to me. I really love this foundation. This is my ride or die. I'm gonna, they're gonna, when they put me in a casket to bury me, they're gonna put one of these with me and I'm gonna be holding like this. That's how much I love this. Uh, powder. It's my favorite. Don't care what anyone says. It's the best in my opinion. Speaking of MAC, another MAC thing that I have to put in my favorites of 2020 is definitely MAC blushes. MAC blushes have always been like my favorite thing of life. I find that they are the most long wearing, smoothest, most beautiful colors and they just complement so many different people. I also love the packaging of them but that's not why they made it to this level of love for me. They just, they're the best. I love to wear blush and what really upsets me is when I put on blush, it looks bomb and I leave. And then a few hours later, I like look at my car mirror or I pass by a window and I see my blush is gone. It's like, what's the point of me applying it? So definitely the MAC blushes, they're long wearing, they're smooth, the colors are the best. They're just, they do a good job on the powder and the blushes. So MAC was my favorite for those. The shade that I recently got have been loving is Lush Baby. And the other one that I've been wearing the most in 2020 overall is Gingerly. I don't have like a favorite bronzer of 2020. So I don't want to be a fakie. Just put one in here to put one. So we're going to skip that. I'm on a bronzer journey right now. So I do have some new bronzers that I'm going to, I've been wearing. And I'm going to review for you guys if you're interested. My favorite eyeshadow. I don't have like a big palette. But the Kaja Trios. These guys are showing up at TJ Maxx's near you. Like, just like, just go to TJ Maxx, guys, and look for these. I have six of these Kaja guys, and I love all of them. All of them I have used have been really ride or die to me. The one that I've used the most, because I had it the most, and I recently added these other ones to my collection as they've come up at TJ Maxx for like $4. My fiance got me one a year ago for my birthday, which I look and look this one is in the shade toasted caramel the one i love the most in the most is the gold i don't know if i can get it to show it but like let's see if we can just okay i gotta do like a full kaja video for you guys because this swatches so beautifully every time i wear this on my eyes guys every single time every time without a fail no matter which kaja someone but specifically this one, because I've worn this one the most. Someone compliments me and asks me what's on my eyes. They're just the prettiest. I feel like there's combinations of shimmer and matte. Some of their shimmers are like pressed glitters, and some of them are like just regular shimmer eyeshadows. I find them to be long wearing nice. The mattes are not like really dark, but they're true to color, and they're smooth, and they're so easy to blend out. These are also really travel friendly. They don't break easily, which is good because I'm kind of like, I'm a clumsy girl. So yeah, those have been bomb. I know that this is old news, but the Anastasia brow pencil has been like my favorite. And also the little brow thing. This is in the shade dark brown. I just find these to be really good. You could probably find a cheaper one in the drugstore, but I personally just really like these. The other brow pencil that I've really been loving this year is the Ulta. Ultra brand brow pencil. I think it's like six or seven dollars and they have sales all the time. Definitely get that one. It's long wearing. It's creamier than the Anastasia brow pencil if you've tried that. I think if you like a drier formula, you like the Anastasia more, but that brow pencil works so good. For lip products, I have two lip glosses I wanted to mention. The first one is MAC Dazzle Glass in general. Well, I specifically love Dazzle Glass formula. It's so sticky. It's so pretty. This one's in the shade Sugar Dazzle. I've already used a good amount of like up to the here this much of this one and I've only had it for a few months. They're just so good. They're shimmery. They're pretty. They've got a little bit of color but not too much. They just make my lips look the most glossy and the most juicy and they have sparkle that's not chunky and gritty. I don't like how new lip glosses aren't sticky anymore and I know we're all wearing masks but like I don't know. I want my lips to look juicy when I wear a gloss because the bitch can't afford lip injections. So I also really like the NYX Butter Gloss. These have been like just the HBICs in the YouTube beauty community forever. If you haven't had these, you're missing out. My favorite shade is 
fortune cookie. This is, I have two of these, the same shade fortune cookie because it's that good. This goes on top of any nudie lip I do and it's guaranteed to look good. I never put this gloss on and think like, mm, I need to wipe it off. It doesn't really go. It always just goes. So good. Oh, I mentioned, I forgot to mention two primers I've been really liking. Uh, One, this is really dirty, but this is the Benefit Pore Professional. They had the other one in the green tube, which has been out forever. This one is what they meant to create when they first launched that one, but we're all stupid and we know better that that's just like silicone slip that just kind of makes everything slide around. This one does kind of have that silicone-y feel, but I feel like it actually fills your pores and blind li fine lines in a way that foundation and product sits really well on top of it, so I love this one. This one, oh my god, this one is so special, you guys. This is the Glossy Pretty Filter Glossy Skin Balm by Touch and Soul. I got this in BoxyCharm, but I'd say this is worth the full price tag if you wanted something. What just happened? If you wanted something like this, this is just really good for that baby soft skin. Like, do you guys remember when YouTube had the glass skin uh, trend going around? I feel like people should have been using this for that because this gives you glass skin. The pretty filter part, this is true. Like when you put your beauty blender and you bounce it on top after putting this under your foundation, your foundation's gonna like literally like, the blender's gonna fucking bounce back. That's how good this product is. It makes your skin very soft, like soft, smooth, super hydrating if you're an oily girl this one might not be for you it doesn't make me feel greasy or anything by any means but i could see someone who's oily not liking this one i think if you're oily you should still be okay with this one but both those have just been life-changing oh my god sorry for being so out of order but i forgot to mention the catrice if i need full coverage matte foundation on a day like a full beat i know the catrice will never let me down this one is so bomb it says last up to 24 hours. I haven't tested that claim, but I'm sure it would because this foundation just, she's a performer, all right? She shows up, she does her job. She's a real one, you know, she's your OG. I feel like people still stop talking about this. And this one has like the dropper bottle, which is interesting, but yeah, this is a repurchase item for me. I love this one. I'm kind of dark for my shade I have. I'm kind of light for the shade I have right now because it's winter, but this one's really good matte foundation that one is definitely best applied with a brush in my opinion another one i want to mention that jessica braun put me on to is the misha perfect cover bb cream i don't know what the heck a bb cream really is but as a foundation this works really good it's pretty it's a, just like a true medium coverage foundation when my skin's looking bad i feel like i can build it up to get a little bit more full and i feel like i can sheer this out if i want to although i feel this is easier to build than it is to sheer out i usually put this one with a sponge it's such a good foundation my only complaint with this line is that they say they're making more shades but i'm still waiting and i feel like to get my perfect shade i have to buy another shade they have and mix it with this one and that really annoys me I also don't feel like they're very inclusive as a line, so they need to work on that. But yeah, that was my favorite just everyday foundation. So good, guys. If this isn't they have it in your shade, just get it. Finish on this one, I think, is more like a skin-like dewy. Like this one, in my opinion, is a lot more dewy. This one is something between dewy and matte. I don't know what the word would be, but it definitely gives your skin that healthy lit from within glow that I really like. Speaking of lit from within, I'm not going to talk too much about this one, but the essence little highlighter this is the one i'm a girl with textured skin so this one is just super nice to wear put some on right now because i'm not wearing highlighter but i find that this one like you can never add too much and feel like you look cakey with the essence it's just so nice to wear to work or if you're not a highlighter girl i feel like you'll still like this one because it's fine and this color what is this color be my sunlight i thought it'd be too dark for me but it's not it's really nice they have other shades too now because it was so good i think that's a really good i don't like to wear highlighter kind of highlighter i think that the thing is i think about this is if this was expensive people would be losing their minds over it but because it's reasonably priced it like gets hype and love but like if it had been in like a charlotte tilbury packaging how would people be reacting about it it, you know no matter how much i use it, it looks the same very interesting like that the packaging on this one though i don't know if you can tell but just gets so freaking dirty easily when i was doing full glam this is the one i went for because she's beaming okay like she shows up and she shows out this also makes for a good inner corner highlight too mascara wise the l'oreal lash paradise she's just been my favorite mascara to use she does give you length but i'd say more of her specialties to give you volume i think this is what better than sex is so trying to emulate but they just they can't do it anymore. 
you know this is not very flaky but it does flake occasionally on me i've noticed this is super black it's very thickening and volumizing which i really like i hate when a mascara doesn't do your lashes justice because it's just like what the fuck you only had one job but this is really black it does last on me all day with minimal flaking it doesn't irritate my eyes it gives me volume gives me some length i feel like it makes my lashes fluffy it doesn't make them drape down or anything like that it's just a really good all-around mascara the only con is that she dries out fast and i'd say her shelf life is a month and a half which is annoying i will keep repurchasing this one because it's really good Ooh, the other one i really like but i don't have with me like on hand next to me is the Mab or not Maybelline, Benefit Roller Lash. That mascara is so good. If you don't like clumping and you like length, that mascara I feel like does a really nice job. The wand is also very different. It's like that plastic spiky kind, but not the one that pokes you in the eye offensively and you're just like, the heck, that one's really good too. But yeah um i hope you guys enjoy doing this watching this video with me i already know this video is going to be going up like really late and that's super annoying because everyone's already posted their best makeup of 2020 but you know what like that's one of my new year's resolutions you know what i'm saying it's very on brand for me to be late with something like this but i just really want to say what's my favorite so if you guys have any recommendations for me leave them down below if you want to see the i try to do a get ready with me for new year's because like i'm in my row but i got my glam on you know what i'm saying like we're still out here we're at home um not going anywhere it's what it's like the robe the robe is here Ooh, cleavage the robe is here but the ice is also here you know what i'm saying like anyways I hope you guys have a very safe, not Thanksgiving, New Year's, and take it easy, stay cozy, stay at home. The hospital doesn't have beds for you, so don't be wilding out right now. And if you're not subscribed and you like food or makeup videos, make sure you go ahead and give this a like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, and subscribe for more content. I will see you guys next time. That's all. Bye!